Brought to you by Almond Auctions, the worldwide leader in antique tractor auctions. Blaine Bolte makes it clear why Oliver and White tractors are preferred on his family's Iowa farm. Well, I guess that goes without saying. It's got to be the Oliver brand. That's what, I, that's what this farm here has been powered with since 1935. So, so I guess uh, I am a product of my environment. We never had an engine failure with an Oliver or White. Um, and uh, not that others haven't, but we have not. And I guess that's why we've stuck with them. However, many of the rare and unique models they own have been retired from field work, like this 1984 White 288. Blaine came across this machine at a farm auction. The original plan was for the 288 to take over planting duty on the farm. I really only used it for that a couple years, and then uh, since then, it's, it's really become kind of semi-retired as well. Once I had it, uh, I guess I didn't desire to trade it in because I learned pretty quick that it was a rather unique tractor. The Field Boss series created a stir when introduced by White in 1975, and they are becoming a hot item among collectors of the Agco brand. Models without cabs are particularly desirable. There's, there's not very many of those built. Of what we are aware of, there was only 12 open station 288s like that. The rest of them had cabs and we haven't been able to find all of them where they're located but of what information we have that that's how many were built like that so that is a fairly rare tractor i only know of two other ones besides this one that i have actually confirmed so as far as white tractors are concerned uh, this would certainly be amongst the rarest of the rare of the white era tractors which started in about 1974. Most of these that did not have the cab had a four post ROPS canopy, canopy roof over the top. Uh, this one was ordered uh, with what they call a ROPS delete, which is a very, very obscure option. In fact, there's, there's really not much in print about it. Uh, and uh, that, that's probably what, why I've also kind of semi-retired it. Uh, it's just so unique. The white 288 is powered by a six-cylinder, 354 cubic inch Perkins diesel engine. A lot of white combines uh, use that engine as well, especially the later production ones. And they're, they're a good, solid, dependable engine, a rather fuel efficient engine. That engine isn't the only impressive feature found on this field boss. Blaine takes us on a tour around the tractor to point out a couple of other things that make the 288 stand out. One of the nice features about these tractors, they got a nice tight turning radius and, and a, a well-built front axle, I think, and uh, um, that certainly is uh, nice to have when you're wanting to get into tight spots and whatnot. Uh, you've got the, uh, the Dot 4 Perkins 354 engine here, uh, which would be one of the later series Perkins engines as far as the white tractors were concerned. you got your park brake here, and uh, here's your gear shift lever, your, throttle over under all nice and grouped handy to you your three remotes there everything's nice and easy to get at you know from the seat you know just a nice dash layout and excellent you know vision looking down the hood and and you can certainly see behind the way it's, it's made it's it's almost as if at the factory they just shave the post right off you know but it's it's factory built that way you know it uh, it certainly left the factory as such so, and then you know, not you know, look at how nice it is, you know, uh, roomy platform to get down off of there, you know. Just kind of a pleasure to run and drive. You know, you'll, you'll have a John Deere Farmall guy get on it and and tool around on it, and they said, boy, they, they didn't realize that, uh, you know, those were such comfortable tractors to get on and off, ride and drive, uh, comfortable ride, uh, uh, handle well. You know, it's kind of a Cadillac of a ride, really. Blaine and Christine are the third owners of this original and unrestored field boss. You know, and I'll never lay a wrench to it and restore it. This tractor is completely with the original, with the exception of we did replace one side panel decal that was peeled off, you know. It didn't look right. And, uh, but the other side's original, and all the paint's original on it yet. And you can tell that because the white tractors were not... Uh, 
the the paint did not adhere to the primer and that ugly red primer they use starts showing itself uh, underneath the the frame paint pretty easy on these kind of a chronic issue with those tractors <laughs> you can only have an original tractor once once you restore it that's it it's no longer an original tractor so if you can keep your original tractor maybe gets a little rust on it gets a little dust gets a little you know character that's the tractor but once you paint it and do things to it you've lost the originality Blaine is a longtime member of the Hart Parr and Oliver Collectors Association and is dedicated to preserving the history of these companies and the machines they built. Blaine has a very big passion for tractors, always has since he was a little boy. He bleeds Oliver Green and the silver white. <laughs> That's it for me is purely the history and the heritage of it and making sure the facts and the stories told as accurately as possible. I don't like to spew figures unless I know I'm right and I've re done the research and and am comfortable in that we've got it figured out. If I don't know, I won't guess. So just how serious is their classic tractor fever? Blaine and Christine even got married on a tractor before the start of a tractor ride. He said, what do you think of getting married on a tractor ride? And I said, sure. And I think he about fell over. I grew up on a farm. I love tractors, always have since I was a little girl. So he talked to him and asked him if we could get married on the tractor ride that year and they were thrilled and they helped us set it up. We got married that Sunday evening, June 23rd, and we had a hay rack as what we stood up on and exchanged our vows. Our kids, his son and daughter and my two daughters stood up with us. Both her and I it was our second go around and uh, trying to think of something unique to do that was uh, different, nobody had done before. So I guess the rest is history. This 288 is one of the newest in their collection of 30 plus Oliver and White tractors. Each one is like a member of the family. So don't expect the 288 or any of their tractors to leave the farm anytime soon. No, I've already instructed my husband, this tractor will not be sold, we will keep this. I like this tractor. So hopefully, hopefully we never have to sell it until we're gone. Oh, they'll haul me out of here horizontal before I see them gone. So I'd say hopefully a long time yet, but I guess that's up to the good Lord. 